Hey Barbara, you're planning on joining us for a New Year's party at our place, right? Hi Mrs. Scarlett. I'm not entirely sure yet. I need to talk to James about it first. But I'm definitely interested. No worries. James told me you were coming. If you can, it would be awesome if you could help me out in the kitchen like you did last year. Oh, James mentioned that? Yep, he did. You're practically family, so it's all good is everything, alright? You seemed excited before. You know you're always welcome here as my son's wife, right? It's not about that. So you're thinking of leaving me with all the cooking and stuff? I could really use a hand like you did last time. That's not what I meant, really. I get it now. You want James to come alone so you can enjoy New Year's on your own? I had a hunch. Someone like you, who didn't get any fancy education, might be a bit confused. If you got something to say, just say it clearly. What's your point? It's just that you had me redo the broth last year, which took time. So I wouldn't have been able to help right away. A good wife would handle that kind of thing smoothly. Anyway, it's settled. You're coming whether you're super excited or not. It doesn't seem like you've improved much this past year, so I might need to show you the ropes again. That won't be necessary, really. We're family, and New Year's is family time, right? No need to stress. The kids won't be around, so it won't be as chaotic. It's not the kids I'm worried about. Last year, I know my husband was drunk and Uncle Mike was a little rough on you, but this year will be much more relaxed, I swear. The drinks won't pack as much punch, I think. Are you sure about that? Absolutely sure. I'm not trying to be hard on you. I care about how you're doing. I want you to be the best partner for James. Plus, I know you don't have a big family around. I want to share what I can. So, come on, be part of the celebration, okay? Let's have a great new year together. Also, I'd like you to find a nice restaurant and order three of their best dishes. Three popular dishes. That could be a bit expensive. Is that alright? Come on. Don't overthink it. Just place the order, alright? You do tend to question things a lot. Doesn't James ever get on your case about that? I think, as his spouse, Sometimes you just go along without too much back and forth. Well, we do have our disagreements. But that's not really the issue. How should I pay for the restaurant stuff? Do you want to send me money first? Just pay for it first, and I'll give you the cash when we meet up. You'll get the food, and I'm also counting on you to bring some dishes. If you're my son's wife, you should be able to whip up something, right? Fine, I got it. Hey, Henry. This is Barbara. How have you been? Hey, Barbara. Long time no see. I've been doing great. How about you? I'm hanging in there. I hope your wife and your nephew are doing well, too. Yeah, he's doing all right. Despite his recent breakup, he's been focusing on his studies. By the way, I noticed you haven't swung by the restaurant lately. I was a bit concerned. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. The reason I haven't been coming is that you'd insist on giving me everything for free. I felt bad about not paying for meals that cost quite a bit, so I decided to stop coming. What are you talking about? You worked as our front girl for years. Your energy brought in so many customers. You're a big part of our success. I owe you, so the least I can do is provide you with free food. No, that's not really the case. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to work there and for the meals. But I've moved on from that job. And it doesn't feel right to get things for free anymore. I see. But listen, my wife and I were thrilled to have you working with us. We had a blast. Our family is small and we don't have kids. So taking care of someone young like you was a joy. Same goes for we've been looking after him so his parents can sort things out. I knew you were looking after him, but I didn't know the backstory. Is everything okay with your sister and her husband? They ran into financial troubles and went bankrupt. I hired my brother-in-law as a chef at the restaurant to help them out. 
That's really kind of you. I'm sure they appreciate it. Besides, people tell me I have a bit of an intimidating look, so I couldn't have attracted customers on my own. <laughs> well, it seems like it's a win-win situation. I really don't owe you anything. I also don't need special treatment. But, speaking of which, I have a request as your customer. Sure thing. What can I help you with? I'd like to place an order for some food from your restaurant, specifically three of the top specials. Three specials would feed around nine people. Are you sure that's okay? Yep. I'm actually having a family get-together for New Year's Eve. Would that work? Absolutely. Consider it done. I'll make sure it's a priority. And honestly, I don't mind giving it to you for free. You've paid for so many meals when you didn't need to. Let us do this for you. No, really. It's alright. I'll pay for the whole order. Your restaurant is top-notch, and I can't just accept things for free. Besides, my in-laws will be covering the cost, so no need for special treatment, please. I get your point. But just so you know, offering you three top specials can get quite pricey. It's okay, I insist. But I do appreciate the offer. Well, if you're sure. Anyway, I remember you venting about your mother-in-law last time you visited the restaurant. Is everything alright now? I was hoping things got better, especially since you're invited to their family gathering. It's not exactly great. She actually kicked me out of their house last year, claiming I cooked too slowly. What, in the middle of winter? That's awful. Yeah, it was really tough. But I managed to call a cab and get back home. I'm kind of nervous about going back this year. Isn't there someone from your husband's side who would stand up for you? Not really. They've all labeled me as the kid whose parents abandoned her. The whole family seems to have something against me. One of my husband's cousins even told me I'm useless for dropping out of college. That's awful. How does your husband handle it? Is he supporting you? Well, he tends to prioritize his family. When it's just the two of us, things are fine. But at his parents' place, he changes completely. That must be really tough for you. Okay, I have an idea. I'll personally deliver your order and stick around to make sure things go smoothly. Oh, you don't have to do that. I'll come by around 6 o'clock on the 25th to pick up the order. Don't worry about it. I'm genuinely concerned, Barbara. I want to help in any way I can. If anything goes wrong, let me know. I'll rush over and set things straight. Let's plan for the big day, just in case. We can discuss the details later. When's a good time to call you? Alright. Thank you so much. Hey, Scarlet. Can you please let me in? It's freezing out here. And I didn't bring a jacket. I couldn't care less. You're so disrespectful for someone whose parents abandoned them. How dare you talk back to me? Well, you told me I couldn't even have a bite of the food I cooked. And you refused to reimburse me for the bill. That doesn't seem fair. How many times do I need to remind you? You're not part of our family. Our food isn't for you. I understand that I may not be a part of your family. But is it necessary to constantly remind me? I was hoping we could at least share a meal together. Oh, how generous of you. If you're desperate, there's cranberry sauce. Have as much as you want. Fine. If that's how you feel, I'll just head back home then. Like you said, I'm not family anyway. Oh, so dramatic. Going back home like a wounded bird, are we? Sit yourself, Barbara. I won't lose any sleep over it. That's for sure. Is that really how you want things to be? We used to be close, and now you're treating me like a stranger. It hurts, Scarlet. Oh, Barbara, spare me the melodrama. We used to be close, but things change, don't they? People change, relationships change. Maybe it's time you accept that and move on. It's not that easy, Scarlet, and I can't accept this thing happening. I am the one who buys all these things for your family. And now you treat me like this? 
It's just not fair to me, you know? Oh, please. Don't act like you're the only one who's hurt. I've had enough of your constant neediness and emotional blackmail. If you want to leave, go ahead. I won't stop you. Well, you know what, Scarlet? Maybe it's for the best. I don't need toxic people like you in my life. I deserve better than this constant belittling and lack of empathy. Oh, poor Barbara. Always blame the victim. Fine. Go find your better people. See if they can tolerate their unbearable presence. I will find better people, Scarlet. People who appreciate me for who I am and don't try to tear me down. And maybe one day, you'll realize what you've lost. Oh, I'm shaking in my boots. Good luck with that, Barbara. I hope you find a perfect little bubble where everyone adores you. But don't come crawling back when you realize how good you had it with me. I won't be crawling back, Scarlet. I'm done with this toxic dynamic. It's time for me to prioritize my own well-being. Goodbye. Good riddance. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> Barbara, what's going on? The food delivery just arrived and they're a demanding payment. I thought you'd eventually pay me back, so I told them to take the money when they drop off the food. It's $3,000. Thanks. $3,000 is way too much. Even for a fancy restaurant, are you serious? Come on. It's nine portions of their best dishes from one of the fanciest restaurants around here. And remember, that's with a discount. But you're the one who wanted those special dishes, right? I just followed your request. Yeah, maybe. But that doesn't mean you had to order $3,000 worth of food. That's crazy. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it would be $3,000. I told you on the phone and again in person. But you were cool with it since you wanted me to handle it. You weren't planning on paying me back. But now that you have to foot the bill, you're acting like this. It's disappointing. Uh... Right from the start, you wanted me to pay. So that's why you chose an expensive restaurant, right? I could tell that's what you were thinking from the beginning. I can easily understand you. Wait a second. I'll pay, but I don't have $3,000 right now, and the bags aren't open. What should I do? Tell that intimidating guy from the restaurant to leave? No matter what I say, I don't think he'll budge. He won't leave if he thinks he won't get his $3,000. He won't move until he gets the money. Scarlet, just pay him, please. I told you. I can't pay now. I don't have it. Am I supposed to wait for money to fall from the sky? I can't get that much money right now. Truly. I don't have any way at all. So, do you want to cancel the order then? Yeah. There's no other option. I can't afford $3,000 for food. Well, keep in mind you'll still have to pay a cancellation fee. What? Where did it come from? Now there's a cancellation fee too? That is absolutely nonsense. Yeah, they've already used their time and ingredients to make $3,000 worth of food. It's fair for them to charge a fee if you decide to not go through with it. They've put in an effort, and it would go to waste, so they need compensation. Okay. Okay, fine. How much is the cancellation fee? Well, they've already prepared food for $3,000, so the fee would be around $3,000. What? This is like going to back to square one. This must be a scam. I'm heading to the police right now. You're going to be charged with fraud. I don't know what part of this you think is a scam, but when the police arrive, I'll be more than happy to show them the time you threw boiling water at me in the kitchen, or when you hit me with the frying pan, or how about when you spread cooking oil on the floor, causing me to slip and fall, and then proceeded to kick me while I was down? And I'll show them the instance when you called me a worthless failure. What do you mean, show them? The man who's currently at your doorstep helped me set up a small camera inside. He's been looking out for me since I was very young. He's like a father figure to me, and he was extremely concerned. A camera? You mean you recorded everything? No. How could you? Exactly. I'm grateful we planned ahead and installed those cameras. I never thought you'd go so far as to physically harm me. So, Scarlet, go ahead and call the police. Or should I? Honestly, it doesn't matter much to me. No, we'll hold off on involving the police. I see. In that case, please settle the food bill. There are only adults at the party. 
If you all pitch in, I'm sure you can come up with $3,000. Someone must have a credit card at least. I think this is not a difficult problem to solve. All right. Fine. I'll ask everyone to contribute money and I'll cover the bill. Is that what you want? If I do that, you need to tell that guy at my door to leave and erase that footage. All right. I've just received confirmation that he's been paid. However, I'm definitely not deleting the footage. By the way, I also have recordings of the entire family ignoring and mistreating me. So if you don't comply, it won't only be you facing exposure. Keep that in mind. I can't believe you set up cameras in my house. That doesn't sound legal. It's an invasion of privacy. If I didn't have concrete evidence, people wouldn't believe me about the abuse I endured. I apologize for the invasion of privacy, but my well-being takes precedence. You're despicable. I don't know what James saw in you. You're a horrible person. I'd argue you're the one who's despicable for engaging in such cruel behavior that you don't want anyone else to see. I consulted with Henry, who ensured I had legal counsel. If you step out of line again, I will release this footage. Furthermore, I've been instructed not to disclose this, but three months ago, James's job was downsized and he lost his job. Now he's just a parasite. What? That's not true. He just told me how well things were going at work. He talked about his promotion and race. You were there. Are you lying to me? Nope, I'm telling the truth. He spent the last three months sitting in front of the TV, playing video games while I've been working tirelessly. He's been relying on my salary. He hasn't even made an effort to find a new job. He claims he's been applying for places, but I haven't seen him attend a single interview. I don't need a freeloader in my life, so I'm leaving him with you. I hope you and your family can support him emotionally. James lost his job? I can't believe it. He's been lying to me and unemployed for three months. Please tell him to leave me alone and never return. He spent two years pretending not to notice the mistreatment I endured from your family. That's when I realized I don't love him anymore. He's been trying to conceal his job loss. If you threaten to expose this, he'll likely comply with anything you say. People with big egos are easily manipulated. Ugh, I can't believe it. You're crooked. And what about you? The mother-in-law who bullies her son's wife incessantly and criticizes her cooking despite lacking culinary skills? And the husband who tries to assert dominance over his wife in front of family despite being jobless? Being around your family was like being in hell. I'm relieved to be leaving all of you. What's wrong with you? Your parents abandoned you and you don't even have a family. Yes, you're right. I've always yearned for family, but I'd rather face that than remain in a family like yours. Oh, please. Abandon me. You know nothing about my past or what I've been through. Just because I don't have a traditional family doesn't mean I'm any less of a person. I've built a life for myself and created my own support system. Well, it's clear that you're bitter and resentful. Maybe if you had a taste of a real family, you'd understand the value of it. A taste of real family? Are you implying that your dysfunctional family is the epitome of what a family should be? I've seen families that support and love each other unconditionally. And trust me, yours falls far from that standard. That's not fair. We have our issues, sure, but every family does. We stick together through thick and thin. Sticking together through thick and thin doesn't mean subjecting each other to constant emotional abuse. A healthy family is built on respect, empathy, and understanding. Your family lacks all of those qualities. You're just bitter because you've never experienced the joy and love that comes from having a real family. Joy and love can come from many different sources, not just a blood-related family. I found joy in the friendships I've built, the community I'm a part of, and the meaningful relationships I've cultivated. I don't need a toxic family to define my happiness. Well, I hope you find whatever it is you're looking for, but don't think for a second that your judgmental attitude makes you superior. I'm not claiming to be superior, but I won't let anyone, including you, Invalidate my choices or my experiences. You may have your family, but I have my own path. 
and I'm proud of the person I've become despite the challenges I've faced. Fine, believe what you want. Just remember, family is important, and you'll realize that someday. Maybe, but until then, I'll continue to surround myself with people who uplift me and support me, no matter their blood relation. And that's something your so-called family could learn from. And I'm not saying that the love and support you receive from your family isn't valuable. It's wonderful that you have that in your life. But what I'm trying to convey is that family isn't just limited to blood relations. It can be found in deep friendships, in chosen families, and in the communities we build around us. Chosen families? That's just a euphemism for not having a real family. Blood is thicker than water, you know. That saying is often misinterpreted. It actually means that the bonds we choose to form, the relationships we actively build, can be stronger than the ones we're born into. It's about the depth of connection, not mere biology. We have the power to choose who we want to surround ourselves with, who we consider family. I still believe that nothing can replace the love and support of a blood-related family. They're the ones who will be there for you no matter what. That may be true in some cases, but it's not a universal truth. Blood relations don't automatically guarantee love, support, or a healthy environment. There are countless instances where people have found solace and strength in non-biological families because they create an environment of acceptance, understanding, and compassion. Well. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree on this matter. I still believe that my family is irreplaceable, and that's perfectly fine. We all have different experiences and perspectives. The most important thing is that we find happiness and fulfillment in the relationships we choose, whether they're blood-related or not. That's it. It's enough. I can't take it anymore. Fine. If you want to leave, so leave. I don't need you. You will just make me feel irritated. You refuse to help us, even though you are a part of this family. That's unacceptable. I am nothing to you, and I don't want to be anything to you. Stop all of those name calling and insulting. I'll just leave all of you right now. After leaving the house that day, I felt a mix of emotions as I returned to my empty home. It was tough having to pack my things and face the reality of finalizing the divorce. My husband refused to agree to the divorce, holding on to hope for reconciliation. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law tried to apologize, but I couldn't accept her empty words. The years in that difficult marriage were filled with constant conflict, worsened by the complicated relationship between my husband, his controlling mother, and myself. His unemployment made things even more challenging, as he relied on his mother for financial support. It became clear that money was the main motivator for my mother-in-law, with little genuine care for me. In the midst of all this, I decided to start fresh and move to a new place seeking peace. There, I found love and acceptance in Henry's house, where I'm treated like family. I'm now happy and content, focusing on the present and future. Although the scars of the past remain, I'm embracing my newfound freedom and independence, putting the idea of marriage on hold for now.